Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can create custom motions for your iProps or iAvatars. In this case we're going to be using the Fortune uh, Dinosaur Pack, the awesome looking T-Rex that we have on the screen right here. And I'm also going to show you how to convert your iProps into iAvatars so you can take advantage of separate motion files and uh, avatar proportions and all that stuff. But first of all, let's get started on creating our custom motion. So I'm going to right click on my dinosaur. It has a number of embedded motions as you can see quite a few here. And all we're going to do is we're going to have a loop walk just playing for a couple, a uh, couple frames here. I'm going to press F3 and go into the timeline and I'm going to just open up my animations track here. You can see we have our motion clip there for loop walk. I'm just going to make sure looping is on and we're going to loop it for a few frames here. Now I did a similar uh, similar animation in the uh, introductory tutorial for uh, Fortune Animations, so make sure you check that out as well. Uh, so all we're going to do is just go through this really quickly. I'm going to make sure I'm at about this frame right here, and I'm going to go into the animation and edit animation layer. That's going to allow me to press the reset button to create a keyframe. If I open up the animation layers, you can see that's where the keyframe uh, adds in because we're in the edit motion layer tool. And from here to here, I'm going to have my dinosaur turn his head to the left. I'm going to select the uh, neck bone right here and just use the E hotkey to rotate slightly to the uh, left and have the dinosaur look over at us about there. And then from here, I'm going to right click this uh, keyframe and copy it. And we're going to paste it maybe about somewhere down here. And we can just paste that right in the uh, dope track like that. And then about here. We'll go back to reset and that'll take it back to the original data that's found in the motion clip. So then we have something like this. Okay, so looking over and then going back to normal. That may be a little bit fast. We can take this one over a little bit as well. There you go. Okay. So now we have this custom motion. And what I'm going to do in between those is I'm actually going to go to uh, this frame here, press the tab hotkey. That'll take us to this one here. And I'm going to open my monster's jaw here or a t-rex's jaw okay so he's going to be roaring as well as uh looking over so we have something like this and like that you can see it'll gradually go back to normal we don't want that so i need to just right click this keyframe copy it press the tab key and press Control v and that'll paste it over here tab takes you to the next keyframe and shift tab will take you to the previous keyframe all right nice, neat little tip there and between these two jaw openings what i'm going to do is i'm going to flicker the tongue a little bit all right because this character has, or this uh, monster model has some pretty cool tongue animation, or tongue bones. So let's go ahead and just take this, at both this frame here, we'll take this one tongue like this, and then we'll have the uh, middle tongue go down like that. Next section go down like that. Uh, whoops, right there. And then the tip section, just like right at the bottom there. All right, and then we'll go a little bit ahead like this, view to about here, and we'll have the opposite. So we'll have the... Uh, tongue flicker upwards. There we go. And our face tongue right there. All right. So now we have this uh, like that. And all we need to do is uh, select both these keyframes, press control C, and maybe paste it, paste them here, paste them here, and paste them there. And then we have a tongue flicking like that, like we had in the roar. Okay, so pretty cool and uh, simple and easy to do. So this is our custom animation. Let's go ahead and uh, play back and take a look at it from maybe about uh, this distance right here. It looks about fine. Just walking along and then rah. Okay, so there's the uh, tongue flickering animation. You can probably see it better from maybe like this angle. There you go, okay. Okay, you know, uh, just a very simple animation in two seconds. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we have this uh, dinosaur and we want to save this animation to the perform motions uh, of our dinosaur. So to do that, since it's an iProp, you can just go ahead and in the collect clip track. Now what I want to do before I get into this is I want to make sure that we have this, I want to make this run uh, or walk and roar. I want to make it compatible, easily blended in with the original run or the original walk rather. So let's take a look at frame one and look at the dinosaur's position. So the left foot is firmly planted on the ground and uh, that's basically all we need to take a look at for now. Let's go to the first frame after the tongue flickering where the left foot is planted on the ground right there. Okay, so maybe a little bit before. And you can see the uh, the edge of the clip right there. So a little bit before that edge, we're just going to go to there. And that's where we want to break it or we want to just uh, collect our clip from there. Okay, 
So let's cl uh, click and drag, left click and drag in the collect clip track. This is going to allow us to collect that animation data. And I'm going to right click and add to perform. And we'll call it uh, walk and roar. All right, so this will be walk and roar. And then we can just go ahead and right click the animation. If we want, we can save it out, but let's go ahead and just remove object animation. Keep uh, things anew here. And let's go and right click, perform, and you can find walk and roar at the end of our list right there. But for fun, let's go ahead and choose the loop walk first. Okay. And right after that, let's right click here, perform, and then choose the walk and roar. So you can see it blends in nicely. And then we have the continuous walk and roar. And if I play back, walking, very seamless transition right there. All right, so pretty cool. So we have that walk and roar. Now, what I'm going to talk about next is converting iProps to iAvatars. Now, there's a couple advantages of doing this. One is the ability to have your motion clips saved separately. Uh, so they're not embedded in your character as performs. You can save them separately. Uh, and the other one is to the ability to change avatar proportion and all that fun stuff. All right, so let's go ahead. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select my dinosaur, go into my edit uh, tab right here, and edit in 3D Exchange which I already have open. That's going to load up our uh, Dino Buddy in 3D Exchange. And you're also going to see that additional perform motion that I added in there as well. All right, here we go. And once he's in, let's take a look, first of all, over at the perform editor. Uh, so it'll say the animation data will be removed. Don't worry about that. And in the perform editor to the right, you will see that we have uh, all the animations right there. Loop attack, loop attack, everything, death, blah, 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 blah. And then at the last, at the end frame, we have walk and roar, which is, uh, you know, 299 frames right there. All right. So this is all fine and well, but what we want to do, we want to convert this to an eye avatar now. So in order to do that, all I need to do is have my dinosaur selected in the hierarchy. And I want to go over to convert to non-human. You won't be able to convert it to non-standard because although he is bipedal, he's very different from the original, uh, you know, normal characters that we have. So I'd select, uh, I'd, I'd recommend selecting convert to non-human here. All right. And it'll just go ahead and, uh, change the, reset the pivot info. Don't worry about that because uh, a prop has one single pivot, whereas the, uh, bones of a character have multiple pivots and then it'll come up with this bone bounding size. We're not going to worry about that too much right now. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and press OK, and we'll get to that in iClone. Okay, so now we have it converted into an iAvatar pretty much right here. It's already done, and we still have all that stuff in the Perform Editor. So what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and export it to iClone. So we can go up here to Export in the uh, top left-hand corner there, and let's call it uh, um, Cool T-Rex, okay, because it's cooler than the last one. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, choose a different destination on my uh, uh, folder here. I'm going to choose Browse. Go to my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder. Just call it uh, Temp. Press Enter. Uh, it seems there's already one there. Okay, no worries. And press OK. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the... Uh, make sure you have Export Animations selected because you want to export all those animations as separate files. And I'm going to choose the same uh, folder. My Temp folder on the desktop there. OK. And that's pretty much all we need to do. Let's go ahead and press OK. That's going to export the entire thing along with the animations. <clears throat> Successfully exported. All right, so we can close out of 3D Exchange now. We don't need to save this uh, current data. Let's go to our desktop, and you can see we have the temp folder right here. I'm going to go into that folder, and you can see we have all of the animations right here. Now, they don't have uh, awesome thumbnails because we exported from 3D Exchange. But let's go ahead and... Uh, um, make it a little bit smaller. Just so we have uh, this mode here. And you can see they're all iMotion files, except for one, which is Cool T-Rex, which is an iClone avatar file right here. Okay? So basically it has uh, the avatar file right here and all the separate motion files. So what I'm going to do now is just go into iClone here. We can just uh, create a new project. We're going to save this one. And let's go uh, to our temp folder and load in Cool T-Rex. All right, the iAvatar of Cool T-Rex. And there he is right there, fine and dandy. So what I can do here is I can uh, right click on the perform uh, menu for this character as well. And I can just choose, you know, uh, loop walk. Same thing as before. And the loop walk will play. In addition, I can go to like, you know, uh, explorer. And I can just uh, find uh, walk and roar. And I can click and drag that. And drag it from explorer. 
You can also, you know, save this to your iClone default directory, which will be your custom directory in your iClone folder as well. Um, uh, but you can, I'm just choosing to choose Explore, so you can know how to customize it a little bit more. All right, so there's our two animations right there. We have, uh, you know, the walk and the walk and roar. Exactly the same, except now, if we go into our scene manager, it's saved as an avatar as opposed to an iProp, okay? So that's pretty cool. Now here's a cool thing that you can do with uh, iAvatars is you can adjust their uh, mesh and their size and also create physics for them as well. All right, so let's take a look over here at avatar proportion. So in avatar proportion, it's going to just basically delete the animation data. Don't worry about that. We'll just go ahead and press OK. And here's where you can really change the size of each part of your character. So what I'm going to do is just go into the bone selection here. We're going to go deep, deep, deep down into the side inside this uh, T-Rex here. And uh, you can move this little uh, bar over to see where you're going. And I'm going to go into the spine, spine, spine. You can see there's a lot of bones, a lot of spine bones. It's a very detailed character. And finally, we're going to get to the neck. And under neck, whoops, there's a little uh, move over there. And I'm going to twirl down neck. Let's twirl the neck again. And finally, we get to head. There's two head sections. There's the head top and the head bottom. That's, and these correspond to the top part of the jaw and the lower part of the jaw. So if I take this lower part of the jaw right here, let me just move that over, I can go ahead and I can adjust the values of this. I can choose the width, I can choose the length, and the depth right there. Okay, so I can give him a really weird looking uh, jaw. I think that was, you know, I forgot the original values there. I believe they were at, uh, let's see the other ones, 74. Okay, so go to, uh, just type in 74 here for all these values to get back to original size there. All right, and you can also lock XYZ and do it all at the same time. All right, so let me just press 74 here and enter. They'll all go back to 74. Now, uh, you can see the problem there. If I want to make the head bigger, I need to choose both of the, uh, both the top and the lower section of the jaw. So I can simply hold Shift and select both of them right here. And you can see they both become selected, and then I can increase the, the, head, the head size completely differently. So if you want like a tune type character or like an oversized head, maybe it's a baby with an oversized head, you can do this as well. Now obviously the issue here comes in when the uh, lower jaw and the uh, upper jaw begin to uh, break into each other. So what you can do in, in that case is you can adjust these individually. I'll take this uh, top uh, jaw for example, and we can rotate it forward and backwards. So rotate it slightly up like that. Take the bottom jaw and do the same thing. Just rotate it slightly down like that. Okay. And, you know, it might be a little bit too open or not, but uh, you can you know, choose side to side as well, twist it as well. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do there. I'm just going to control Z that. And I uh, just wanted to make sure that we, you know, got it so it's not, uh, they're not breaking through uh, each other. Maybe that looks a little bit better there. All right. So then we have this T-Rex with a massive looking, uh, massive looking head, much larger than the uh, traditional T-Rex head. You can do the same thing for stuff like the tail too, for example, if you want. Um, the tail can be found, uh, you know, right here, I believe. Uh, you can see the tail. You can expand length, width, and height and everything. Uh, I believe the depth is, oh, the length might be, nope, oh, it's the width that'll extend the tail there. Okay, so you can extend the tail that way as well and take this section of the tail. Um, well, that seems to be the, uh, Anyways, you can modify all this kind of stuff on your free time, but uh, you know, um, just so you can, just so you know, you can modify all the proportions and everything. And the dinosaur and the dinosaur will still run, still walk, just the way it did before. So if we just go ahead and apply those same motions to it, perform uh, loop walk. Yeah, we got a longer uh, tail, bigger head, but he's still walking, still doing fine. And there's our walk and roar. All right, all right, so. What we can do in addition to that, we can actually assign physics uh, collision points to this dinosaur as well. So let's go ahead into collision shape here. And uh, I'm just going to select collision on. We're going to go select something on the dinosaur like the uh, spine, just to kind of show you a quick example here. So I'm just going to select this spine joint right here and activate selected part. And you can see it's so small, we can't see anything right now. All right, so let's press the R hotkey and let's scale it up. And you can see, boom, we suddenly have this uh, collision uh, section here and if I want I can just change that to a uh, box a sphere or a capsule I believe it's a capsule now and uh, you can extend this capsule like this way or uh, this way there we go 
And we can go further down into the spine as well, maybe like this section here, activate this section and uh, expand it a little bit. Um, you know, change the bound axis to uh, X, Y, or Z. We get uh, slightly different results here. Maybe the box we'll use for now. We'll rotate this as well. Oops, I think we made that box really long. Let's bring that back into a normal kind of position there. All right. So we're going to use blocks for now. Again, you, ideally you want to use capsule like this. Okay, you, set, you can see now the capsule is correctly proportioned. And uh, let's press W and uh, bring it over here somewhere. Just uh, make it so it's covering the entire creature's back. Because I'm just going to drop something on its back and you can watch it kind of fly off the back. All right, because nothing can harm this awesome T-Rex. And we're just using the R and W hotkeys to position it and uh, scale it a little bit. And we're going to go with that. All right. So now we, I'm just going to choose one spot there. This one here, I can just deactivate that and only have this one. You can see the little check mark there. I mean, it's activated. All right. And then we have a margin, uh, friction elasticity and everything like that. You can adjust that to whatever you'd like and uh, close this for now. You can just go show active shapes. Only one will show up and we're going to close it down. So let's quickly add in a uh, sphere and we're going to drop the sphere on the dinosaur's back as he's walking. All right. He doesn't seem to care. He's too big. We're going to take this sphere right here, this ball. We're going to bring it above the dinosaur's back. Make sure it's directly above his spine there. And then I'm going to go into physics, activate physics. We'll leave it as a dynamic rigid body and choose a bound type as a sphere since we are dropping the sphere. And then we can just go ahead and press play. And then well, it'll kind of run through his back there. Maybe we place it in the wrong position slightly. Let's try something different there. There you go. <laughs> it kind of just bounces off his back right there. Um, probably because he's moving up as the uh, ball bounces. So maybe bring it a little bit higher up. A little bit higher up. We want it to fall on his back while he's uh, in the lower position. There you go. Okay, so you can see it just kind of falls off his back right there. And uh, no harm, no foul. The dinosaur doesn't seem to mind that ball's dropping on his back. All right, so that's one cool thing you can do with the uh, eye avatar. Just add physics, uh, you know, capsules to certain parts of their body. And you could have natural stuff like uh, even rocks or something, you know, uh, going off the back of the dinosaur, which would be a pretty cool example. Um, but that's about it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Just want to show you a little bit about the uh, cool things you can do by converting your uh, eye prop monsters, dinosaurs to eye avatars and also how to save custom motions to your perform menu. All right, so make sure you check out our forums at forum.realvision.com, and I'll see you in the next video.